Welcome to this first episode of Tooltips. In this episode, I will introduce you to a budget 3D printer and show you why it is a must have in your garage. Welcome back to the journey to the Baja 1000 and this first episode of Tooltips. What is Tooltips all about? Well, there are some things that I have in my garage that I wish somebody had told me about years ago. It would have saved me a bunch of money or time or is just a really cool tool. Well, this 3D printer earns the first episode because it's so cool and you'll be surprised at how cheap it is. Let's take a look at it. Well, there are a bunch of misconceptions when it comes to 3D printing. First is that they're too expensive or they're difficult to use. The printer that I have is the Creality Ender 3. Let's take a look at how you buy one, how much they cost. I'm gonna walk you through how you set it up and how easy they are to use. But first, let me show you some of the things that I have made. Maybe it'll spark your imagination and you can see how one of these will fit in your garage. Let's just start with some toys that I've made. This was a uh, project for my little boy. He wanted to be the coolest kid in his kindergarten class. So we printed up like 20 of these Batman keychains, and I was able to print nine of them at a time. Here's a really cool wind-up car that we made. You print it out, it's in a sheet, and it's just like those old models we used to make uh, years ago. And every time one of his friends has a birthday party, we make one for them too. So I have two different kinds of Sono speakers in my house, and so I had to make mounts for them. This is one of them that I made. Here's the other Sono speaker mount that I made. And as you can see, if you look underneath, the bottom comes out and you can tuck all the wires up inside of that. It's basically a hollow box on the inside. Pretty cool. Like I said, this thing makes some really cool tools. I was working on a project where I needed to find the center of a piece of wood, so I printed out these center finders. Basically, you put it on there, you put a pencil in the center, and you can scribe a line right down the center of whatever you're making. And I was able to print a couple different sizes for that. I've been making a lot of mounts for LS engines, and I printed this part out such that I could basically, on a piece of plate still, mark off how big the plate's got to be, and also where I'm going to drill each one of the holes, and it makes it a lot easier. I made this part because I've been bending a lot of tubing, and anytime you're bending tubing, you need to know exactly how many degrees you rotate it before you start another bend. So I had an angle cube, and I already had this vice grip. I basically made this plastic mount in here to where the angle cube sits inside of there. And then once I clamp it down and I rotate it, it tells me exactly how many degrees I've rotated the tube before I make the next bend. Well, it is really cool all the things that you can make once you have a 3D printer. So where do you go to get a 3D printer? Well, first let me say that the one that I have is the Creality Ender 3, and it's this one that's on the screen right now. And it's just the one that I would tell you to go with. There are a bazillion options of different printers that you can get. But just if you just want one, you know it's going to work and it follows along what I'm going to tell you to do. And it's going to work for you every time. Make it easy. Make it cheap. Then go with this one. Uh, I will make a link in my description for this printer below. They're asking $250 for it at Amazon. Now, if you do a Google search, which I would do, you can find it for $189 directly from Creality. They're both coming from China. doesn't matter who you order it from, uh, but it's still a pretty good printer. When it shows you up, you're going to have to put it together yourself, and there are tutorials online that show you exactly how to put this printer together. There are a few other things you're going to need to get to make it all work. Just like you need printer ink, well, you need uh, filament to go inside this printer. And the one that I would recommend to use is the Hatchbox. Now, there are other brands that you can get and use, and you might save some money, but I would just go with Hatchbox. You have less likelihood of having failed prints, and the quality, from what I understand, will be better, and it just works. So I would just go with the, uh, the Hatchbox, even if it costs you $5 more. One spool will last you uh, literally a week of printing. Uh, while you're on Amazon, go ahead and pick up some glue sticks. These are the Crazy Art washable glue sticks, and you're going to use that to make the filament stick to the glass that you're going to use, and I'll explain that a little bit more later. And also, while you're at it, if you've never cut glass before, for a couple bucks, go ahead and pick up a glass cutter, and let me show you why you're going to need to get one of these. If you look online, you'll see that there are a lot of folks that are doing modifications to their 3D printer. Since this was my first one, I decided to go with just a very generic build. The only thing that I decided to change was this plastic mat that comes with the printer. This is where the part prints onto, and it needs to be flat, but you'll find that this thing over time starts to warp 
and the part just doesn't stick to it anymore. So what I replaced it with was a piece of glass. I found this piece of glass out of an old picture frame that I had. I just took this plastic mat, I took a Sharpie, I marked around the edges, I took a glass cutter, cut out this piece of glass, and then now it ensures that every time I start, I start with a flat surface, and that is really the most critical part when you're starting a print. Okay, so now you have your 3D printer. How do you actually make something? Well, first thing you need to do is get a file called a, called a .stl, and I have no idea what .stl stands for, but there are two basic different ways to get one. Either you can download one from the internet, and I'll show you that in a second, or you can make your own. There's a bunch of different CAD programs out there, computer-aided design. You can use SolidWorks, you can use SketchUp. Uh, what I use is Fusion 360 because I also use that when I uh, use my plasma table. And so I'm pretty familiar with it. So whatever you're familiar with, as long as it makes a .stl, you can print stuff from it. And so this is that angle finder that I was mounting on my vice grips. And you can kind of see I customize it. It's all ready to print. I'm ready to go with this thing. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say 3D print. Uh, I'm going to select the part that I want to 3D print and it's going to send it to Cura. And I'm going to explain in a second here what Cura is. The other way to get a .stl file is to download one from the internet. There's a couple different websites I'm sure out there that you can use, but I use Thingiverse, and I find that you can just you can find all kinds of cool stuff on this website. I'm trying to find something that I can put on my pegboard so I can keep all my consumables for my CNC plasma table. So I just typed in pegboard, and let's see what it comes up with after the search. Well, I found a couple different uh, people are making things for pegboards here, but I like this guy. He's called the Pegboard Wizard. Let's click on him and see what he has. And he's got a bunch of different really cool stuff. And what I need is this thing right here. I want a tray that I can put on my pegboard. So I'm going to go to his thingy files and I'm going to go down to this tray that he made. I'm going to click download. And then once it's downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and, and tell it to... Uh, open that file and it's going to open it again in Cura. Let's take a look at what Cura is. Okay, so one of the biggest hurdles for me to get through with 3D printing was how do I get this .stl file into the 3D printer and make that work? I thought it was going to be a big issue, but it just really isn't. The tutorials will walk you through how to use Cura, which is their program for uh, converting that into the code that the 3D printer can read. Uh, so we've already talked about how you get the 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 .stl to go from either your CAD program or from Thingiverse and it's going to open up in the Cura program. There are a couple things that I use on here I just want to show you so you can see that it actually is pretty easy and anybody can do it. First we start with the settings and what that's going to talk about. There's two things that I use. I use infill and support. The infill tells you how much of the object is going to be solid when you're done printing it. 100% means it's going to be completely a solid part. 20% means that 20% of it's going to be filament, while the rest is some kind of open space and some kind of matrix that it's going to print to support the part. What support is, and you need this anytime you have something that's hanging out in space. You see these pegs right here. If you were just to try to print those, then the filament would just go all over the place. So it needs to print something underneath there to hold those things in space. Underneath here, you can see the top of the box, or the bottom, if you will. We would need to print an entire... Uh, support underneath there to make it so that that whole top doesn't just fall in and print uh, all over the place. So I'm going to go ahead and slice it and by hitting the slice button what I've told it to do is start generating the code that would go into the 3D printer. It's also going to tell us how much filament it's going to take and how long it'll take to print this part. And it's telling me 18 hours and 3 minutes to print it in this orientation and also at 100% infill. Well, let's see if I can eliminate some of that time. I'm going to print the same part but I want to just rotate it on the bed and I want to flip that big huge open space to face uh, up and then I'm going to hit slice again. And what we'll see is now it, it still has to print the supports underneath these pegs, but it doesn't need us print the support that is in, you know, to hold that bottom up anymore. In this case, it's going to take 11 hours and 35 minutes. That's a lot less. Now this part doesn't need to be strong for me. I just need to print something that uh, will hold a couple of parts. So 20% infill is going to work just fine uh, for me in this case. And I find most of the stuff that I print out, I'll just print out with 20% uh, infill and it does, it does just fine. And uh, after doing that, we'll see it should take a lot less time. Seven hours and 10 minutes. It literally took off 11 hours of printing and you're going to end up with what looks like the exact same part. A couple other things on the left side that you can do, you could rotate it like I, sa I said. And one that I use all the time is moving it around. And the, uh, this, this option to 
to move the part around on the bed. And you'll find that that is really important. And I'll show you why. If I right click and I say uh, make multiples, I'm going to make one more of these, um, is now I can, if I have like say nine parts I want to put on the bed, I can move those around such that it all fits on top inside the bed and then I might also cluster them together so that the printer isn't going all over the place to try to print these things uh, at the same time. In this case I really just want the uh, the one part uh, on there so I'm gonna go ahead and slice that and now what I have in the computer is the SD card that came with a 3D printer so what it's gonna give me the option here is to save to removable. I'm gonna click that and then just like anything else, I'm going to go ahead and eject it. And now I'm ready to pull the card out and put it into the 3D printer and it's ready to go. You can see it's just fit into the USB drive. I grab that microchip, I pull it out, and it's just an adapter. It's as easy as that that they give you. And that's what goes into your computer. And now you take this microchip over and you put it into the Creality Ender 3. It just slides in there. You'll hear it as it, as it clicks into the 3D printer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and coat this piece of glass lightly with the other uh, glue stick. First, I'm going to start all the way on the very side because what the first thing the printer is going to do is it's going to print one test strip. I think it's just a, a test that it does to clean out the nozzle and get it ready to print. And then next I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover as best I can the entire area in which I think the printer is going to print. And if, if in doubt, just cover more area because what you don't want to do is to have a corner of your print to print up, uh, to pull up during the other print. Once that's covered, go ahead and take the four clips that it has, put that thing inside on top of your, uh, your print bed and clip it down. All right, glass is on the printer, you're ready to go. These are the steps that you need to take every single time you print something and you need to re-level the bed. So here's where we're gonna start. We're gonna go ahead and go to the main screen, go to prepare, and then we're gonna go down to auto home. Auto home is gonna send the, all the different axes and all the servos back to their zero point. Once you're there, we're gonna go back over to the, uh, the screen. If it goes back to normal, just go back to prepare, and then down to disable steppers. Once the steppers are disabled, you can go ahead now, move around the bed, and also move around the nozzle. What we're going to do next is try to set the height of the nozzle above the bed. And what we're shooting for all the way around is about the thickness of a sheet of paper. To do that, we're going to go ahead and turn these wheels. If we turn them clockwise, the bed is going to raise. If we turn them counterclockwise, the bed is going to lower. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and slide this piece of paper in between the nozzle and the bed. And the goal is, is just to slide the paper back and forth and then start turning the uh, knob clockwise until we feel it start to drag on the piece of paper. Once it starts to drag on the piece of paper, we're, no, we're right about there. At that point, what we'll do is we'll slide it to the other corner. One of the tips I have is just leave the piece of paper underneath the nozzle and slide it with the nozzle across the, uh, the bed. And then do the same thing on that corner. Slide it to the rear, do the same thing on that corner by moving the, the, the rear knob up and down, and then over to the final corner. Once you have it all done, and you may want to go around one more time and check all four corners, uh, then now the bed is level in relation to the nozzle and it's ready to print. So like I said, the first thing it does is it prints down the side. I call this the nozzle cleaning print. It's just trying to get out, especially if you change filament, you'll see that it'll start with say black and then eventually get to the filament color that you're using at that time. And then the next thing it's gonna do, it's gonna print the perimeter of your part. This is your chance to check to make sure that whatever you're printing is actually gonna to stick to the bed. If you didn't level it, you're gonna find out right now because it's gonna be the extreme corners of whatever you're printing out there. So if it's starting to pull up around the sides, this is where I would go in and I would stop the print and start all over again with putting on the glue stick and then also re-leveling the bed. It goes around this thing about two or three times and then once it does, it's off to the races and printing. And then now you can go and uh, do whatever you need to do for the next seven hours while this thing continues to print.
Once the print is done, you just remove the clips, take the glass off the tray. Go ahead and find a flat surface to put the piece of glass on. They provide you with this scraper, and what I normally will do is I'll take this scraper and a small hammer, find a little spot maybe in the corner of the print, and then just start tapping on the print to release it from the glass. And there you have it. From here, we just got to remove some of the supports that were on there that were holding the parts that were just hanging off in, in space. And there you have it. There's the full part. Well, here's the final part at work in the garage. You can see I liked it so much I printed two of them. I think it's really cool that we went from an idea to having a working part in our garage. After just only a couple hours, it probably cost me about 25 cents to make. So let me rehash one last time the three most important rules. First, start with a piece of glass so you can have a flat surface when you start your prints. Use a glue stick to make sure that print sticks to the glass, and then finally level the bed every single time. Well, hopefully this has maybe changed your mind and cleared up any of the misconceptions you might have about 3D printers. All the products I talked about are linked in my description below. And now you can see, for about a little over $200, you too can be 3D printing in your garage and making some really cool parts. Thanks again for joining us on the journey to the Baja 1000 and this first episode of Tool Tips. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button below. Can't wait to see you again on the next episode. Take care of yourself. Thanks again for joining us on this episode. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. We'll see you in the next episode. Take care of yourself.